Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's so good to see all of you guys this morning. Uh, familiar faces, uh, those who are guests with us this morning, we, we just welcome you. Uh, we're so glad you're here with us to, uh, to receive God's good gifts. This is where he's delivering them. He's given us his word. He's going to give us a sacrament this morning. It's an exciting morning to be here at All Saints. Uh, I do want to just lift up a few announcements that we have this morning as we're looking at some things that are coming up. Uh, there is Pastor's Friday book study that's going to be starting up. Uh, and this this Friday? This Friday. This Friday. Uh, the Way of Belonging. So those of you who are, have been a part of that or if you have an interest in being part of the book study, uh, talk to Pastor. Saturday morning is our first class for our member orientation. Uh, some of you who have already been connected to All Saints for a while. I saw I've signed up back there. Some of you who are new and are looking to, to join uh, in membership, this class is open for anybody who would like to just maybe get a refresher on uh, what it means to uh, be a Christian, but a, a Lutheran Christian as well. Um, Bible class tomorrow. You know, we do a Bible class in our fellowship hall each Monday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we've been going through the book of Second Chronicles just want to invite you to come to that. Even on Labor Day, we're still going to get together for those of you who are available at 10 o'clock in the fellowship hall. It's an hour, and we just walk through the Bible together and discuss. Uh, right now, we're going through Second Chronicles. Um, Mel Thrasher's memorial event is coming up, and that's going to be uh, September 11th. It's a Wednesday at 2 o'clock. So I just want to make sure that everybody's aware of that. Um, I know many of us were connected uh, to Mel in different ways. For me, it was the stories I've heard of him and the impact that he made uh, on a lot of you guys. But uh, we do want to make sure that you, if you have the opportunity, to come to that memorial. Bible class is starting next Sunday, Sunday morning at 8.45 a.m. downstairs. Uh, they're going through the hallmarks of the Lutheran faith. And if you have an interest in being a part of that, uh, see Les, he's over in the, the sound booth in the corner. Uh, if you need to get a book, or if you want to get connected to that class, I'm sure he'd love to give you some more information about that. This morning, there's going to be some changes in the, the order of service. So I want to make sure that you're aware of what's going on so there's no confusion when we get to um, certain parts. We are doing communion this morning, as I mentioned, uh, but it's not in your bulletin. So we're going to do a little hybrid service. We're going to actually use our hymnals this morning when it comes to the communion liturgy. If you notice on the boards... It says uh, page 160. We're going to go through the order of uh, Divine Service 1 for communion liturgy. So when we get to that uh, portion, you can open up uh, to page 160. And then we have two communion hymns that we're going to be uh, singing from the hymnals. And you see the up there on the board as well. Now, uh, to add to some of the changes, our sermon hymn this morning, we're going we're gonna to move that sermon hymn after the readings this morning. So we're going we're gonna to sing our sermon hymn after the gospel reading, which th there's a reason for this, because you're going to be standing for the gospel reading already. And if you've looked at what we're singing, it's stand up, stand up for Jesus. So we don't want to be sitting while we, stand, while we sing this song. And then to add on top of the, the changes, there's one more thing. And if you've got a pencil or something, maybe you can jot this in. Instead of singing stand, stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, I'd like to invite you to sing Stand Up, Stand Up in Jesus this morning. I know this might be a little confusing. I'll help remind you uh, when we get to the, the hymn. But there's a reason for this, and it has to do with our sermon today. Um, so Stand Up, Stand Up in Jesus is what we're going to be, to be singing. Uh, which reminds me, as people who are in Christ, we're called to mission here at All Saints. And we've been talking about this mission that we, we carry out. This mission that involves three W words. I just want to know, as you guys have been soaking this in, can anybody help me understand this mission a little bit more? The three W words. Can somebody give me one of them? Walking. Walking, <coughs> walking together, walking alongside one another. Uh, what's another one? Work. Say that again. Work. Okay, we, we walk alongside uh, each other, we, uh, we welcome each other, all right? And sometimes we do that while we're working together in the community or here. So walking, we welcome, and what else do we do? 
we worship together, and that worship is coming in, right? Right? It's from God to us. So this morning, we remember that we are people who are a welcoming people. We walk alongside one another, and we've come this morning to, to, to get God's good gifts in worship. So as we remember that this morning, I'd like to invite you to take some time for meditation, to prepare for worship, uh, whether it's a, a hymn that you'd like to look over or one of the scripture passages. There's Bibles in your pew racks. And uh, take some time to be prepared for how we stand in Christ this morning. Put on the full armor of God and stand in the strength of his might. But through the waters of our baptism, instead of the armor of God, we were clothed with Christ's righteousness. So as we bear those robes of righteousness this day, we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand for the singing of the hymn. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. We confess, O Lord, that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Lord our God, you are our only hope. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may follow your guidance alone. 
Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. We come to you, confident of your mercy, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Now, I have good news for you. No, I have great news for you. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with the willing spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the source of all that is just and good, nourish in us every virtue. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I invite the congregation to please be seated as we continue with the reading of the word. statutes and the just decrees that I am teaching you and do them that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that your fa father the God of your fathers is giving you you shall not add to the word that I command you nor take from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you keep them and do them for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear these statutes, will say, Surely this great notion, nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us, whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and just decrees so righteous as all this law that I set before you today. Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and to your children's children. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against all the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert 
with all perseverance, making supplications for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in the opening of my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
name of Jesus, amen. amen. The congregation may be seated. I remember growing up in, in Texas, and oftentimes we would go to, to Six Flags. I don't know if anybody's been to a Six Flags, but ours was Six Flags over Texas. And I can still remember the first time that I was actually able to ride one of the big boy rides. I finally met that 48-inch requirement, and I was able to go on the, the Judge Roy screen. That was the name of it. Now, the funny thing is, I'm, I'm kind of afraid of heights. I don't know if anybody's in, in the same boat as me, but, but I love roller coasters. There's something weird about that, because if you're on a roller coaster, you're dealing with, with heights. But there's... There's something about when I get in that, that, that roller coaster and I'm strapped into the harness, I feel, I feel secure. I feel confident that that harness is going to do its job. Now, ever since that first ride, I've gone on other ones, you know, some that are a little more intense, with loop-de-loops and the twists and turns. And I'm one of those riders that has my hands up the whole time. Is anybody in, the, in that boat with me? Hands up, riders? Okay. Now, this, this security that I feel is not because of something within me. If I'm standing up on the same heights outside the roller coaster, I'm going to be terrified. But I trust in the, the belt that's fastened over my waist, that it's going to do its job. I trust that harness that's put over my shoulders. And I'm confident in that. But I can imagine how terrifying I would feel if there was no harness, if there was no belt, if I was going on any of these roller coasters without this, this uh, protection, I would be terrified. I'd be holding on for dear life. I would be praying for that ride to get over with and just praying to make it out alive. Aren't our, aren't our daily lives kind of similar to that roller coaster? I mean, some days are more intense than others with the, with the twists and the, and the turns and the, and the loop-de-loops that get thrown at us. And it might leave us wondering, you know, how can I stand strong and confident in the midst of a turbulent ride called life? At every corner, it seems like there's some spiritual attack that's coming our way, that's waging war against us. You know, we're lured and enticed by the temptations of this world. Now, each of us is not, we're not immune to this. We feel this, this attack. And sometimes, some days, we might, even, we might even lose our stability and stumble. And that's why Paul's words from Ephesians 6 today are so, so good for us. Because what he encourages us to do, he says that he wants us to be strong in the Lord and put on the whole armor of God so we might stand firm against these, these spiritual forces of evil. Now it can be easy to look at this passage and, and maybe just think of it like another burden, something else we have to do. I've got to put on this belt and this helmet and this breastplate and I've got to carry this sword. You know, we've got to have the right shoes on. But it's not like that at all. You know, just like we change the, the words of the hymn a little bit, stand up, stand up for Jesus. I want you guys to be comforted that we stand in Jesus. Up to this point in Paul's letter, he's reminding the church in Ephesus and we've been talking about this each week, that we are, and they are, in Christ. We were securely fastened into Christ's personal armor when the waters of baptism flowed over our heads. You know, it's Christ who empowers us to stand confidently against the attacks of Satan and the forces of evil. You know, this is a battle that we do not fight alone. But I know for many of you guys, it's becoming harder and harder to stand. Maybe it's a, a knee surgery that you've had. Maybe it's a, a hip replacement. 
or just a strain on your back. They all make it hard to get up on your feet and remain standing. And just so you guys know, when, when Pastor or I invite you to stand, we don't want that to be a burden on you. That's an opportunity to stand, but it's not. there's nowhere in Scripture that mandates that we stand during parts of the service. So stand as you're able. Let that be something that if you are able to stand, that we do so out of reverence for God. You know, these... These aches and pains of our bodies, they're oftentimes accompanied with other types of aches and pains. Mental, emotional, and spiritual pains. You know, these, these things weigh us down, and they all make us question sometimes, when is all this pain and suffering going to end? And this reminds me of a good friend of mine uh, named George. George was one of the oldest members of our congregation in the, the first church I served back in Texas as a youth minister. And George would, he had this like slow shuffle about him. He'd, he'd, he'd get from here to there, maybe a little slow, but he would have a quick word to catch you off guard every time you saw him. Now, I was, I was young and foolish right out of college, and, but George was a person who gave me a lot of encouragement throughout my ministry there in Texas. And he would always remind me who I was in Christ. And he, lift me up, he lifted me up when I needed it. And I really loved seeing how, especially how George's confident faith, it impacted not only his children, who were strong members of our congregation, but even his children's children, as we read from our passage in Deuteronomy. You know, his grandsons, John and Brian, were a part of my youth group. And, and I know that they were just so proud of their grandfather. They admired his faithfulness. After a, a few years after I had left Texas, uh, I got word that, that George had lost his slow shuffle. And he spent the last couple months of his life in a hospital bed. You know, although his physical posture had diminished and his body was weakened, he still stood confidently in the promises of God. You see, when George was baptized, Christ wrapped him in his righteousness. He wrapped him in his personal armor. And even to the point where George couldn't physically stand any longer, he was being held up by the arms and armor of Jesus. He had been nourished by Christ's own body and blood, which strengthened and preserved him throughout his life and now into eternity. You know, on this side of eternity, standing firm against the schemes of the devil, it can be a punishing ride with twists and turns at every corner. There's temptation with every loop. It's almost like this, uh, this wrestling match Paul talks about in Ephesians 6. We're, we're waging war against the rulers and the authorities and the, the cosmic powers over this present darkness. And many of you might feel like your face is being pressed against the mat and you just, you just want to give up. You're ready to tap out. You might find it exhausting entertaining the lies that Satan whispers in our ear. And, and sometimes those whispers are, are, just go ahead and just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Or maybe he's saying, just, just stand on your own two feet. But this pull towards independence only turns us farther away from Christ and it curves us back in on ourselves. See, in these moments, you, you have to ask yourself, do I really want to ride that roller coaster without the harness, without the belt? It's not, it's not going to go well for you. But if we stand in the full armor, in the whole armor of a Savior who went to battle against Satan on our behalf, 
know, when Jesus went out into the wilderness to fast for 40 days, he was tempted to, to give in and take the easy way out, but he never faltered. You know, with every flaming dart that Satan shot at him, he stood firm on the word of God. You know, many of the Jewish leaders in Jesus' time, they were looking for a savior who would, who would rise up in power to conquer their enemies who had this control over their land. You know, and even though Jesus had the power to take out the entire Roman military with one single word, he chose instead to lay down his life for you and for me. He, he knew that this battle it wasn't against humanity, but it was against the spiritual forces of evil that had held a grip on the world that he loved so dearly. So he came into the world, and he suffered, and he died for you and me. He set aside his divinity, his godness, so that you might be wrapped in his personal armor. You see, Jesus battled sin and death on your behalf, and he won the victory. Jesus lives triumphant. And because he lives and reigns victoriously, you are not alone in the world. Now, Paul concludes his letter to the Ephesians in chapter 6, what we read this morning, by stressing the importance of praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication for all the saints. Now, this is a bold prayer. It's a bold prayer that when we pray this way, God is flowing through you. Now, these prayers, they don't have to be long or eloquent in any way. It's much better when they're simple and direct. Now, we never know what kind of spiritual forces we might encounter or what somebody else out in the world is encountering when we, when we come upon them. Maybe there's people that you encounter who have already been praying for how God will deliver them from the evil that, that plagues them. You know, it's in these moments we have to be ready with our armor on to encounter people who are dealing with unimaginable uh, difficulty in their lives. In fact, I was just talking to Lisa the other day. She was sharing this in our, our Wednesday uh, Bible study about an experience she had at, at Ingalls. And uh, after placing her order at the deli counter, she just, just natural conversation, asked the gentleman, how's your day going? And he was honest. He said, it's not been a very good day. And in that moment, uh, she responded with, well, how can I pray for you? May I pray with you? May I pray for you? He said, well, I, I can pray for myself. But she was nudged in a way by the Spirit to be able to meet him and encounter him in that moment. Not with anything long or, or eloquent, but with a bold prayer. All she said was, Lord, I know what's weighing heavy on, your, on, your, on my friend's heart this morning. Lord, you know what's weighing heavy on my friend's heart this morning. Give him peace in Jesus' name. It's 17 words, seven seconds. She was able to boldly witness to the peace that passes all understanding. She stepped into the battle that he was facing and let him know that he was not alone. This bold yet simple prayer allowed him to encounter the living God in that moment. So when we see others who have fallen down, you know, this image on the front of our bulletins shows somebody who's physically fallen down. Somebody else is reaching to, to pick them back up, but whatever the circumstances, whether it's emotional, spiritual, physical, we reach out and we pick them up. And we stand with them in prayer. And we do this knowing we don't stand on our own two feet. We don't do this by pulling ourselves up by the bootstraps and, and standing on our own confidence. We stand confidently in the armor of God, which is Jesus. We stand in truth and righteousness, peace and faith, 
confident in our salvation and leaning on God's word, we pray with and for each other. So as we sang earlier, remember, we stand up, stand up in Jesus. And we know that his personal armor covers us with his righteousness and he defends us from the evil one. It's Christ who empowers you to pick others up when they're down. And it's his armor that gives you the strength and confidence to stand boldly in him. Now may the peace that passes all understanding open up your hearts and minds in Christ. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand for the singing of the hymn. Join in our profession of faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven 
and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us go to our gracious God in prayer for ourselves, the church around the world, and all people in their various circumstances. For the leaders of the nations who are tempted to use their own faulty wisdom and understanding, that God would move them to call upon him who alone has statutes and just decrees so righteous as the law he gave. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the families of the earth, wherever parents have forgotten to make God's commandments known to their children and their children's children, that God would open their hearts to his direction and guidance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the church around the world, as it struggles to stand against the schemes of the devil, that God would strengthen them with the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those people near and dear to us dealing with illness, mourning the loss of loved ones, needing adequate food, clothing, and shelter, and having other concerns. Especially this day, we pray for Dan Meyer as he continues to progress and is going home on Tuesday. For Steve Mazzaferro, who had surgery for a hand infection. For Julie, Sean, Olivia, Pat, Jenny, Eric, Rita, Ed, Brenda, Miller, Wendy, Gail, Lisa, and the others going on the hiking trip, and all others that we name silently in our minds and our hearts at this time. That God would answer our prayers for them as we make supplication for all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves and all who recognize that by ourselves and our fallen condition, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. That God would strengthen our faith to rely on his grace and mercy alone. That he may use us and the gifts he has given us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew right spirits within us. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite the congregation to please be seated for the singing of the hymn.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Now as we transition to the service of the sacrament, I again want to remind you that uh, we will be using the hymnal, uh, page 160, Divine Service 1.